I V M. Folks, welcome to Credit Smart with Sibyl. I'm your host Anupam Gupta. I'm an author and the host of the Pesa Pesa podcast. And my guest today is Sujata Elavat, Senior VP and Head of Trans Union Sibyl. This episode is especially for people who are new to credit and TC, where we take you through some simple steps to establish credit and how to maintain a healthy credit score. Welcome, Sujata, to the show, and thank you so much for doing this for our listeners. Hi, Anupam. It's great to be back again. Let's do this. So, this episode, Sujata, is about people who are new to credit. I believe it's called NTC, and we're going to tell them about how you can begin your credit journey. So, the first question for you, Sujata, is tell us more about who identifies as a new to credit consumer, and how are these consumers evaluated by lenders? So, Anupam, I think uh, this is one of our favorite topics, and uh, you know, as we start looking at how the financial industry is growing, the new to credit consumers are going to play a very important role. So, let's begin with understanding who new to credit or an NTC, as we call, is somebody who's never taken a loan ever, uh, whether it's a credit card or a personal loan, or somebody who's just stepping into the credit cycle is somebody who identifies as a new to credit. So, let's look at a scenario. So, if you've never taken a credit card or not even a consumer durable loan or a personal loan, you will be tagged as a new to credit where your score actually is shown as NA and NH. These consumers, as you start looking at how lenders evaluate this, these consumers, obviously because you don't have a track record to show, so lenders are slightly cautious as they start underwriting these consumers as well. While it's difficult, it's not impossible. So lenders look at different sources. So if you've just started a new job, your income would be important as well, your employment details. So you can actually start with taking a small loan amount. Lenders would be willing to give it slightly, I would say, because you might, you've not shown any kind of repayment behavior, slightly higher interest rates. So lenders do look at alternate uh, data sources to evaluate these consumers. And of course, you know, it's not impossible. You can definitely start a credit journey once you have taken the first product and start building on that as well. Yeah, it's, it sounds like a chicken and egg situation, right? Because how do you get a loan without a credit score? And if you don't take a loan, you won't have a credit score. So how does one do this? Well, they all say, you know, you need credit to build credit, but it's not impossible, right? There are different ways, like I mentioned earlier, these are the consumers who all the banks and financial institutions are wanting to lend to because they will be in the life cycle for a much longer period of time because they're first time borrowers. The ideal way is to start small. So there are different alternatives that a consumer can look at while trying to build a credit. You know, some of the options that I definitely would suggest is look for a consumer durable loan. So, you know, you would have seen a lot of youngsters who've just started jobs. They walk into a consumer durable store taking the latest mobile. You can actually walk out with credit as well. So that's a good way to start. So a consumer durable loan is considered as a secured loan and lenders are willing to offer credit against that. So consumer durable is a good way to start. Also, a good way to start is to look at uh, the salary account, the banks where you hold a salary account. They are willing to, most of the banks are willing to offer credit cards against the salary account basis, your employment and income details. So a salary account a credit card works as well. Another good option to consider is a secured credit card. A lot of times for new to credit customers, banks are looking at some bit kind of guarantee. So secured credit card is something against a fixed deposit. So any bank where you have a fixed deposit, you can actually avail a secured credit card as well. These are some of the good things that a consumer can look at to build credit. But of course, the golden rule is, you know, you have taken credit. These are facilities that you're taking. You need to pay back regularly to ensure that, you know, you're building a good credit score. Yeah, folks. So consumer durable, salaried, you know, a credit card backed by your side account. And of course, a secured credit card are the three ways that Sujata just mentioned. So the very useful points for consumers and hopefully our listeners who are new to the show and who are new to credit what happens after I have, I establish, I get a Sybil score? How do you maintain a healthy credit profile? Yeah, so, you know, as you start taking your first product, I think it's important that, you know, you continue paying back on time. So you will see in another in six to four to six months where you will start building a score. There's no secret formula. I think the golden rule is pay back on time every time. And as you start building your credit, your first loan after that, you know, you need to start maintaining a good mix of secured and unsecured as you start looking at planning your financial future. What is the next step you need to take? You need to start evaluating what are the credit facilities that you can avail of. Monitor and check your credit profile regularly. I think that's extremely important uh, because 
given the options available, you know, we've seen, we've spoken about consumer durable, but we've also seen this entire pay later options coming in. While it might look like a facility that is given by an e-commerce company, end of the day, it's a credit line. So make sure you're monitoring your credit profile regularly. Paying back on time, I think paying back EMI on time is the most important thing, you know, as you, even a single default can impact your civil score in the long run. Also, because you're young, you know, there are so many options available. I think when you look from a financial freedom standpoint, there's so many options available. Over leveraging yourself is a big no-no. So I think you need to tread cautiously because as you start looking at more banks lending different credit products to you, you need to ensure that you maintain the right balance of your income and expenses. So don't over leverage yourself. Apply for credit when you really need it to get all the good things in life. Above all, I would say building a score is not a 100 meter race, right? It's it's a marathon. You need to practice for it. You need to make sure you're cautious about it. You, make, you need to make sure that you are taking part and you're making sure you are consistently displaying the right kind of financial behavior to continue maintaining a high score. Okay, so yeah, you mentioned pay later in one of your answers earlier and it's become a very popular way of buying consumer products. Tell us more about it because it's a very easy way of getting credit but sometimes things might go wrong. So Anupam, you know, you rightly said, I think it's a very easy way to get credit and I think it's also a way where you don't realize what you're getting into, you know, given these these young first-time borrowers as well. So let me just tell you how a pay later program works. So every time you buy a big purchase on any of the e-commerce companies, they actually tie up with a, a finance company at the back end where a consumer is, a, it's, it's a loan that you're taking. Like you take a consumer durable loan, as you take a pay later option, it is taken as, it's a loan that you're taking for that product, which gets reported to the bureau on a regular basis. So it's a credit facility that you're taking. You need to make sure that you're paying back on time because while it is in the journey, you have to be very, very cautious. The way to also look at it is when you check your credit profile, these pay later options are reported behind the lender who is offering, under the name of the lender who's offering these services with the e-commerce partner. So don't be worried if you see lender that you don't identify with. It's very important to go through all the terms and conditions as you're going through the journey as well, which is the lender who's offering so that when you start monitoring, you know, and start monitoring and checking your civil score and report, you know, which is the lender who has offered these services to you. Golden rule, it is a credit facility that has been taken by you. You can use it to your advantage where you're paying back on time, making sure you're building that uh, credit profile as well. So paying back on time, so I want to ask you a couple of questions out here, especially for you know for any loan, whether it's a credit card, whether it's an EMI. How does repayment of my loan on time work with my credit score? Like if I'm paying within time, that's great. What if I pay early? What if I am one day late versus 10 days late? Does this, you know, does the number of days matter or is it like once you missed it, you missed it? Then it doesn't matter. No, I think Anupam, it's... So let's look at what happens if you're paying early, right? Banks report all this information of your repayment on a regular basis to us. So, you know, some of the banks report on a weekly basis, monthly basis. Paying early would not have too much of an impact. However, it does give that bank the comfort that, you know, you are a good customer. It gets reported and it will be shown as standard or zero, which means you've not defaulted on the payment date. However... We do understand, I think, you know, situations can be tough for people. A slight delay would have a small impact. But when you look from a perspective of how a score is calculated, it looks at a trend, right? How are you paying regularly late? Are you paying on time, etc.? So while we do understand that sometimes situations might be tough and you've missed a payment by a day, you can always bounce back. So it might not have as much as of impact as it's you're consistently reporting 30 days late or 60 days late and you're it's becoming a trend. So it's not the end of the world, right? It is easy to bounce back, even if by any chance you've you've really missed a couple of months because of your tough job, you've lost your job. It's very easy to bounce back. Patience is the key. And then consistency is what brings you back and you can continue building a high score. Yeah. Consistency, folks, that's important because you don't want to make it a trend, right? I mean, as long as you make it just a one-off and you recover and you don't keep on making it into a trend, that will be caught on the credit score for sure, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's also the more over-leveraged you are, 
the more amount you have to pay back, it keeps bubbling up, right? It's like those credit card interest outstandings. Yeah. Oh, that's a tough one. Just one last question on over leverage. What does that mean? It, does that mean that if I have a credit card with a limit of say one lakh, is it that if I go towards ninety, ninety five, or max the whole yeah. one, then that's bad, and I should typically keep it low? Yeah. How do, how does that work? So uh, that's called credit utilization. That basically does uh, have an impact on your score. So. Credit utilization is amount of credit that's allocated to you, and how much are you maxing it? So, if you're consistently close to hundred percent, means that you're not able to pay your credit card dues on time, and hence utilization is increasing, which will have an impact on your score as well. About forty to fifty percent is something that consumers should aim at because as you start looking at income to debt ratio, which is how much do you earn and how much outstanding do you have, it will impact your financial discipline as well, not just the score, but you know how you're looking at taking new credit and paying back. Yeah, what do I do with these SMSs that come? You have been granted a pre-approved credit card, and what what if I keep on taking all those credit cards, and suddenly you know I have a nice big limit, but I don't use it, and ultimately my credit utilization ratio is I don't know maybe ten percent or five percent. Does that also having too many cards and not using it, them? I would not say it will not have a very positive impact. Neither would it have a negative impact. I think to look at it is when you look from a credit profile perspective, you need to have the right balances of secured and unsecured products. So too many credit cards or too many unused products also means that kind of data and you know information that you need to take care of you know you should not miss any of those but i think the key is uh, too many unsecured loans will do will not really help you increase your score too much but i think having the right kind of secured and unsecured is important and that's a wrap on this episode of credit smart with civil thank you for tuning in folks i am your host anupam gupta along with sujata elawat from transunion civil we will be back with more discussions on the civil score in the next episode on the ivm podcast app website and on all major podcast streaming platforms